The orbit, the orbit houses the orb, eyeball, and its associated extrinsic muscles, and also contains the lacrimal gland, arteries, and veins, cranial nerves 2, 3, 4, V, 6, and 7, and postganglionic sympathetic nerves. The bony orbit is composed of seven bones, the lacrimal bone and parts of the maxilla, ethmoid, frontal, zygoma, sphenoid, and the palatine bones. The orbit contains the organ of sight, its associated muscles, nerves, and vessels, and some accessory structures, all of which are embedded in periorbital fat. The bulb of the eye and its asoclate structures function in unison to receive light rays through the cornea and lens of the eye so the rays may be focused on the posterior wall of the bulb. Here, the retina, with its specialized cells, when stimulated by the light, constructs images and transmits the information to the brain for processing into a complex visual image. The eye develops from three sources. The retina and optic nerve are outgrowths of the forebrain and are first observable at about four weeks of development. The lens and some of the accessory structures in the anterior portion of the eye are derived from surface ectoderm of the head. Associated structures within the orb, as well as its tunics, are derived from adjacent mesenchyme. Bony orbit The bony orbit resembles a flattened cone, having a roof, medial and lateral walls and a floor. The medial walls of the paired orbits are parallel to each other, whereas their lateral walls are directed posteromedially such that, if each were extended, they would converge near the middle of the skull. The bony orbit, lined by periorbita, periosteum, is conical, with its base located on the superior face and its apex directed posteriorly. The flattened cone possesses medial and lateral walls along with the roof and floor. The medial walls lie nearly parallel to each other on either side of the midline located ethmoid bone. The lateral walls are directed posteromedially so that, if continued, they would converge near the middle of the skull. For this reason, all structures entering the orbit from its apex are directed laterally from the midline. The attachments of two specific ocular muscles correct for this lateral divergence. Chapter 6 discusses the bony orbit, so the reader may wish to review that section for details. Anterior anatomy of eyelid. The eyelids cover and protect the orb from injury. Deep to the skin of the eyelid is the orbicularis oculi M muscle. Internally, the eyelids are lined by conjunctiva, a mucous membrane that reflects onto the sclera, white of the eye. The upper eyelid is larger than the lower due to the presence of the levator palpebri superioris muscle. Tarsal glands deep to the conjunctiva secrete an oily substance to help seal the eyelids and prevent the overflow of tears. Eyelashes emanate from the free margins of the eyelids. The eyeball is covered anteriorly by the eyelid which protected from injury. The skin of the eyelid covers the circularly oriented orbicularis oculi muscle vitreous internally the eyelid are lined by conjunctiva, a mucous membrane that reflects onto the anterior portion of the sclera. In addition, the upper eyelid possesses the levator palpebri superioris muscle, which makes it larger than the lower eyelid. Everting the eyelid permits observation of the tarsal glands deep to the conjunctiva. These glands secrete an oily substance that assists in sealing the margins of the eyelids when they are closed, and this oily substance prevents overflow of tears when the eyelids are open. These glands, along with the ciliary glands, modified sudoriferous glands located in the margin, open via small pores onto the margin adjacent to the eyelashes. The eyelashes, arranged in rows of two or three, curve upward and downward on the upper and lower eyelids, respectively. The opened margins form an elliptical palpebral fissure narrowing laterally into an acute lateral palpebral commissure, lateral canthus, and medially into a larger medial palpebral commissure, medial canthus, possessing an enlarged triangular lacus lacrimalis with its caruncula. Lacrimal apparatus, the lacrimal gland is located outside the orb proper, housed in a fossa in the anterosuperolateral aspect of the orbit. It secretes lacrimal fluid tears, that keeps the cornea moistened as the eyelid moves the fluid to the medial corner of the eye where the fluid is drained by the lacrimal ducts into the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal, tear, 
gland is located in the lacrimal fossa at the anterosuperolateral aspect of the orbit. The gland secretes fluid that is emptied into the conjunctival sac of the bulb of the eye. Each time the cornea dries, the eyelids, acting as windshield wipers, move the fluid over the sclera and cornea. The fluid moves medially to the lacrimal ducts, which begin as puncta, tiny orifices, at the lateral aspects of the lacus lacrimalis on the medial margins of the eyelids. The fluid passes via these ducts into the lacrimal sac located in the groove mostly within the lacrimal bone. The sac represents the upper dilated portion of the nasolacrimal duct, which opens into the nasal cavity at the inferior nasal meatus. Secretomotor innervation to the lacrimal gland is supplied by parasympathetic fibers of the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. Orb anatomy, the orb is spherical structure with a bulge on its anterior surface represented by the transparent cornea. Because of the lateral divergence of the orb in the orbit, the optical axis and the orbital axis do not coincide. Two of the extrinsic muscles of the orb are arranged to compensate for this. The bulb of the eye is almost spherical, except for its anterior portion, which bulges away from the surface in the region of the eyelids. This anteriorly directed surface projection is the cornea. The transparent cornea represents a segment of a sphere occupying the anterior one-sixth of the bulb, and the remaining opaque bulb represents a more complete segment of a different sized sphere. The anterior pole of the curvature of the cornea is nearly parallel with the posterior pole of the curvature of the remaining bulb, forming the optical axis. Because of the lateral divergence of the orbit cone, the optical axis and the orbital axis do not coincide. The optic nerve, cranial nerve 2, enters the posterior wall of the orb at the orbital axis about 3 mm to the nasal side of the optical axis, represented by the macula, the region for greatest visual acuity. Tunics, the wall of the orb consists of three separate tunics, the fibrous tunic includes the sclera and cornea, the vascular tunic includes the choroid, ciliary body, and iris, and the retinal tunic, the ten-layered reti. Conjunctivitis Conjunctivitis is a mild inflammation of the conjunctiva, which can be either bacterial or an allergic reaction. The sclera and undersides of the eyelids are involved. It is especially prevalent in newborns as they pass through the birth canal. Thus, newborns are immediately given prophylactic antibiotic eye drops to prevent neonatal conjunctivitis. In adults, conjunctivitis is caused mostly by seasonal allergy the bulb of the eye is composed of three separate layers fabricated into one wall the outer covering is the sclera which is modified anteriorly as the cornea the middle or intermediate tunic is the pigmented vascular coat composed of the choroid ciliary body and iris the innermost tunic is the nervous component the retina fibrous tunic the tough fibrous sclera is the white of the eye it receives attachments of the extrinsic muscles of the eye. The cornea is the anteriorly placed transparent portion of the fibrous tunic. The sclera is a tough, fibrous layer comprising the outer wall of the bulb. It is white and smooth, except where the extrinsic muscles insert into it. Its posterior portion is pierced by the optic nerve, and anteriorly it is covered by the conjunctiva. The anterior portion of the sclera, or the white of the eye, gives way to the transparent, anteriorly bulging cornea. Vascular tunic, the vascular tunic is the posteriorly located, highly vascular, darkly pigmented choroid adhering to the sclera and retina. Intermediate between the choroid and iris is the ciliary body and its smooth ciliary the sclera is a tough, fibrous layer comprising the outer wall of the bulb. It is white and smooth except where the extrinsic muscles insert into it. Its posterior portion is pierced by the optic nerve, and anteriorly it is covered by the conjunctiva. The anterior portion of the sclera, or the white of the eye, gives way to the transparent, anteriorly bulging cornea. Cornea, the cornea, the transparent, obuscular portion of the fibrous tunic of the eye, is highly sensitive and is mostly exposed to the environment. Slight scratches and abrasions of the cornea usually heal without much scarring. However, more severe scarring impedes vision to such a point that a corneal transplant is prescribed. Presently, 
most transplanted corneas are received from human donors, whereas some transplants are plastic. Muscle attached by suspensory ligaments to the lens. The anteriorly placed, disc-shaped iris contains two separate smooth muscles that regulate the aperture of the pupil in the iris. The choroid, the posteriorly located portion of the intermediate tunic, is a vascular, darkly pigmented layer closely adhering to the sclera and the retina. It is pierced by the optic nerve posteriorly. The ciliary body is a structure located in an intermediate zone between the choroid and the iris portions of the vascular tunic and extends between the most anteriorly located parts of the retina and the iris. Contained within the ciliary body, as it juts away from the wall, is the ciliary muscle. Radiating out from the ciliary body and attached to the lens are the suspensory ligaments of the lens. The ciliary muscle is smooth muscle and therefore, involuntary. It receives its innervation via parasympathetic fibers originating in the oculomotor nerve. Contractions of this muscle reduce the tension on the suspensory ligament of the lens, permitting the lens to become more convex, thereby accommodating the eye to focus on objects nearby. The iris is the most anteriorly placed portion of the intermediate tunic. This circular disc, imparted with color from a deep pigmented layer, possesses two separately arranged layers of smooth muscle whose contractions, when stimulated by autonomic nerves, alter the diameter of the hole in the center of the iris, known as the pupil. The iris is continuous with the ciliary body and is connected to the cornea at its periphery. Its location, between the lens and the cornea, separates this space into an anterior chamber in front of it and a posterior chamber behind it. A watery fluid, the aqueous humor, is secreted into the posterior chamber. Myopia and hyperopia, changes in the longitudinal dimension of the optical axis will cause images to be focused either anterior, myopia, or posterior, hyperopia, to the retina. This is usually the result of changes in the refractive elements of the eye, notably the cornea, which assumes a slight change in shape or a change in the dimension of the orb. Both processes often occur as a function of aging. These conditions can be diagnosed and treated with prescription ground glasses that can optically correct the longitudinal dimension of the optical axis to the retina. The eye by the ciliary body. The fluid passes from this chamber into the anterior chamber through the pupil lying on the anterior surface of the lens. It exits the anterior chamber by draining into the canal of Schlem, a venous channel located at the junction of the iris and cornea. Retinal tunic, the retina consists of three parts, nervous portion housing ten layers of cells, including the photoreceptor rods and cones and the optic nerve layer the parciliaris is a reduced, thin, non-nervous portion of the retina lining the ciliary body and the non-nervous layer lining the iris as the pars iridica. The internal tunic is composed of the nervous layer of the retina posteriorly and the non-nervous pars ciliaris and pars iridica retinae anteriorly. Posteriorly, the nervous retina fans out from the optic nerve, where it is thickest, to near the ciliary body, where it ends in an irregular margin, the aura serrata. Although the nervous portion ends here, a remaining both of these muscle groups are innervated by fibers of the autonomic system. The sphincter muscle group is supplied by parasympathetic fibers originating in the oculomotor nerve, whereas the dilatator muscle group is innervated by the sympathetic system, whose postganglionic cell bodies are located in the superior cervical ganglion. It should be mentioned again that the lacrimal gland, which lies within the orbit but outside the orb, is provided with secretomotor fibers from the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. Nerves of the orbit, cranial nerves serving the orbit include 2, 3, 4, V, 6, and 7. Additionally, postganglionic sympathetic fibers serve the orbit. The orbit possesses nerve components from six cranial nerves, the optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducent, and secretomotor fibers from the facial. In addition, sympathetic fibers also serve the orbit. Each cranial nerve serving the orbit is discussed in detail in Chapter 18 and summarized in Table 18 to 1. Optic Nerve the optic nerve consists of the axons of the ganglionic layer of the retina passing to the brain from the bulb through the optic foramen and to the optic chiasma. Here, 
certain fibers cross over to the contralateral side to enter the optic tract, whereas other fibers remain on the ipsilateral side to enter the optic tract. Oculomotor nerve The oculomotor nerve enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, where it divides into superior and inferior divisions to innervate the intrinsic ciliary and sphincter papillae muscles and all of the extrinsic muscles except the lateral rectus and the superior oblique. The superior division sends branches to the levator palpebri superioris and the superior rectus, whereas the inferior division innervates the medial and inferior recti and the inferior oblique muscles. This division also supplies parasympathetic motor fibers to the ciliary ganglion, a parasympathetic terminal ganglion located about 1 cm from the apex of the orbit between the optic nerve and the lateral rectus muscle. Preganglionic parasympathetic fibers synapse on postganglionic cell bodies within the ganglion. The axons of these cell bodies reach the orb via the short ciliary nerves, to be distributed to the ciliary and sphincter pupillae muscles. Trochlear nerve the trochlear nerve enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure on its way to the superior oblique muscle, the only muscle it serves. Trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure as three branches, the lacrimal, frontal, and nasociliary nerves, all serving sensory function only. The smallest branch the lacrimal nerve runs. Laterally, superior to the lateral rectus, on its way to supply the lacrimal gland and adjacent conjunctiva with sensory innervation. This nerve often communicates with the secretomotor postganglionic parasympathetic fiber for the lacrimal gland from the pterygopalatin ganglion. Preganglionic fibers reach the ganglion from the facial nerve, whereas the postganglionic fibers are distributed to the lacrimal nerve via zygomaticotemporal branches of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The frontal nerve is the largest nerve of the ophthalmic division. It courses forward above the levator palpebri superioris muscle. Midway in the orbit, it divides into a medial branch, the supratrochlear nerve, and the laterally oriented supraorbital nerve. The supratrochlear nerve pierces the orbital fascia and supplies the conjunctiva, eyelid, and skin over the medial part of the forehead. The supraorbital nerve exits the orbit through the supraorbital notch or foramen to supply the forehead and scalp. A small twig of this nerve enters the frontal bone to serve the frontal sinus. The nasociliary nerve crosses over the optic nerve on an oblique course to the anterior ethmoidal foramen. It communicates with the ciliary ganglion, where sensory fibers may pass through the ganglion without synapsing on their way to the orb via the short ciliary nerves that carry postganglionic parasympathetic fibers. Other branches, termed long ciliary nerves, sensory and postganglionic sympathetic, pass to the orb directly. Branches of the nasociliary nerve enter the anterior and posterior, and occasionally, middle, ethmoidal foramina. Just before entering the anterior ethmoidal foramen, the infratrochlear nerve arises from the nasociliary nerve and passes to the medial angle of the eye, supplying the skin of the eyelids and the side of the nose. The anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerves serve the ethmoidal and frontal sinuses. Internal and external nasal branches, derived from the anterior ethmoidal nerve, supply the mucous membranes of the anterior septum and the skin over the ala of the nose, respectively. The maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve enters the floor of the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. It is not discussed here because its only contribution to the orbit is a few periosteal branches. Abducent nerve, the abducent nerve enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure, passing laterally to innervate the lateral rectus muscle, the only muscle it serves. Sympathetic nerves, postganglionic sympathetic fibers, whose cell bodies are located in the superior cervical ganglion, find their way into the orbit. Intrinsic muscles of the eye, include those muscles responsible for controlling the aperture of the pupil in the iris and for releasing tension on the lens for accommodation. These intrinsic muscles are innervated by the autonomic nervous system. The sphincter pupillae muscle located in the iris is innervated by parasympathetic nerves, whose postganglionic fibers originate in the ciliary ganglion. The dilatator pupillae muscle located in the iris is innervated by sympathetic fibers whose postganglionic fibers originate in the superior cervical ganglion. 
the ciliary muscle, whose contractions ease tension on the lens, thus changing its shape, is innervat by parasympathetic postganglionic nerve fibers that originate in the ciliary ganglion. Extraocular eye muscles There are six extraocular muscles that control all of the movement of the eye. These muscles are the superior rectus, inferior rectus, lateral rectus, medial rectus, superior oblique, and inferior oblique. The muscles of the eye are designed to stabilize and move both eyes. Special nervous centers located throughout the brain and brainstem interact with each muscle pair, right and left, to coordinate precise movements of the eyes with limited conscious input. All eye muscles have a resting muscle tone that is designed to stabilize eye position. During movements, certain muscles increase their activity while others decrease it. Eye movement has its own unique names. The movements of the eye include adduction, the moves in toward the nose, abduction, the moves out towards the ear, elevation, the eye moves up, depression, the eye moves down, interzion, or incyclorotation, the top of the eye move rotates in towards the nose, and extortion, or excyclorotation, the top of the eye move rotates in towards the ear. Superior rectus The superior rectus inserts at the anterior, front, portion of the eye, and its origin is behind the eye on the common ring tendon. Its primary function is to elevate the eye, and it has a mild secondary function of adduction and interzion. Inferior rectus The inferior rectus inserts at the anterior, front, portion of the eye, and its origin is behind the eye on the common ring tendon. Its primary function is to depress the eye, and it has a mild secondary function of adduction and extortion. Lateral rectus The lateral rectus inserts at the anterior, front, portion of the eye, and its origin is behind the eye on the greater wing of the sphenoid bone as well as the common ring tendon. Its primary function is to abduct the eye, and it has no secondary function. Medial rectus, the medial rectus inserts at the anterior, front, portion of the eye, and its origin is behind the eye on the common ring tendon. Its primary function is to adduct the eye, and it has no secondary function. Superior oblique, the superior oblique is unique. It inserts on the superior, lateral, ear side, and posterior, back, of the eye. The anatomical origin is behind the eye on the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, but the superior oblique muscle acts a pulley, and loops back trough a connective tissue sling called the trochlea. Even though it is positioned above the eye, its unique use of the trochlea gives it a primary function is to entort the eye, and secondary functions of depression and abduction. Inferior oblique, the inferior oblique is also. It inserts on the inferior, posterior, lateral portion of the eye. Its origin is on the medial, middle, maxillary bone. Its primary function is extortion, and its secondary functions are elevation and abduction. The muscles that control eye movements are interesting. They use a larger supply of blood relative to their skeletal muscle counterparts, and only a few muscle fibers comprise a motor unit. This allows the cranial nerves responsible for coordinating eye movements to have precise control of the eyes. Three cranial nerves are responsible for controlling the eye muscles. These are the third cranial nerve, oculomotor nerve, the fourth cranial nerve, trochlear nerve, and the sixth cranial nerve, abducens nerve. The secondary names of these nerves kind of give away what muscles they control. The fourth cranial nerve is named the trochlear nerve, it controls the superior oblique only. Similarly, the sixth cranial nerve, abducens nerve, controls only the lateral rectus, the primary abducting eye muscle. The third cranial nerve, oculomotor nerve, has a lot of responsibility. It controls the superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, and the inferior oblique muscles.